Hi and welcome everyone. My name is Wendy Feist, and I am your guest host tonight. I am taking over from Jim Hunter, because he happens to be tonight's special guest. So, Jim, tell us a bit about yourself. How did you get to be a talk show host? How did it start? And more importantly, where does it end? Well, Wendy, it's not that I am a full-time talk show host. Not in the least. I am what I am, a wanderer, and I wonder at many things while walking through life. So many wonderful things in life, but also things that are less great. And I always want to figure out why things are the way they are. How things grow, how other people walk their walks. You know. So how did you get to be this way? Are you like a very wealthy person? How were you brought up? Do you come from a privileged situation? I am as wealthy as I need to be, Wendy. Because I am healthy and I have few worries in life. Mostly because I choose not to worry, it's such a waste of time and energy. I don't have all the money in the world, but I don't believe that money is the ultimate goal or answer to anything, at all. Money is a necessary evil, one that can be abolished given the right paradigm shifts. But such a shift is far away indeed. One that I hope to contribute to, but it's not a top priority. That too would defy the purpose of living a fulfilling life. Life and societies need to evolve at such pace as is granted by all its stakeholders. And the stakeholders are all people and extends into the extended families of mankind. A cryptic answer, I am sure. I am not a billionaire and I do not need to get into a rocket to fly to space. If I want to visit other places, all I need to do is close my eyes and look on through my mind's eye. I am privileged with a rich imagination. But I come from a working class family, and my upbringing was nothing fancy. No shortcomings, but nothing exceptional or exquisite either. A privilege of having caring parents, for sure. Some people have commented on your appearance. Your hair, heart-shaped glasses, those strange pants with hearts on them. What's the story of your looks? Look, we all have to present ourselves to the world one way or another. I look into the world from a loving perspective for starters. Some people call it a Jesus type look. Ah, yes. Well, I am not a saint, I can assure you that. But I wouldn't do anything to hurt another being, deliberately. Do you think the snurks will agree to that statement? Likely they would not. But they are snurks, after all. They are highly disagreeable. It's in their nature. It's their raison d'etre. Right. Anyway, you first introduced yourself as the producer of the band, or troupe, named Alice Deeper. How did that happen, and what's the story of you and Alice Deeper? Ah, that is a complicated and long story. But I'll keep it concise, they couldn't agree on who would be their singular representative to the world, and were looking for an arbiter to settle certain creative directions and choices. I was there in the right place, at the right time, and so it came to be. They are happy and I am happy, and the crowd is happy, and we all get along fine. That is what matters most. So what are you currently working on, as producer of Alice Deeper? Well, there is a good amount of backlog in terms of creative produce, so to speak. Partly written fantasy novels, story concepts, science fiction ideas. As we get further in time, we are really pulling things together, consolidating many things to present them through our main outlets which is of course music, but may involve video, at times. What is special about music? Music is of all cultures, of all ages. It has the ability to communicate the deepest of concepts, and if you look just a little beyond the mainstream, you can find the most interesting uses of sound to convey ideas, emotions, feelings. As I said, I have a rich imagination, but I am also convinced that all people have the ability to open this portal within themselves, to let music speak directly to the soul. But the world knows many troubles. Political division, poverty, war, oppression, do you think music can cure all? That would be a stretch. There is a whole lot more to do than music. But it has the ability to inspire, to unite. And eventually, the people in power are people too. And they got where they are because of the whole entourage consisting of people all the way down to the commoner, one does not exist without the other. A change or shift in leadership requires a shift in thinking across the entire population of a country. Technically, a perceived bad leader can shift into being a great leader. It is a matter of perspectives, and different perspectives lead to different decisions. That leads to different behaviors, by the leader as well as the followers, the opposition, and the commoners. Mind that this is purely technically speaking. 
the required shift has to start somewhere. First, we have the power to heal. If we want to, we need to want to, all of us. We need to forgive others and forgive ourselves, mostly ourselves, for all the mistakes we make, and be better for it. And forgiving and forgetting are not the same thing. Forgiving comes with a relief from punishment, of others, of ourselves, we need to stop beating ourselves down for past mistakes. We need to stop blaming others and see how we can reach each other. Yes, I think music can play a pivotal part in that. So, when can we expect a new release, then? When it's ready. We have a lot in the works and choose quality over speed and quantity. You'll hear from us. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story, Jim. We are out of time now, so goodbye for now and take care. Thanks for watching. Thank you all. See you around everybody.